something to note as we take a look. Fairy Pier was a little bit of a thing that we were kind of wondering about with Young Kings 300. It's not anymore. Young Kings have decided to take that drop up to the north and hopefully we won't see any more of that fighting. So unlike yesterday where I think a couple teams kind of came into a, a little bit of some early fights, they're kind of getting a feel for each other. They should all confidently just about know, especially if they went out and did their homework rewatching the VODs after the matches, where teams like to drop, how they're going to rotate, and maybe play a little more confidently, especially for those teams that we know do well on Erangel and oh, Casa Grande. It's oh, just always oh. something, isn't he? Okay, let's Tokyo drift our way into Light Show. <gasps> He's going to try to jump off the roof, but it's not going to work. <laughs> Light Show is down. And that is it for him. But Ooh. more importantly, we have a circle. Okay. So a lot of interesting things. 300. Yeah, Sonic's leaving Pachinki, going through these yellows. And 300 uh, taking a little bit longer to finish up their looting before they headed over to the bridge to do a camp there. Nefahor going to be the one that's trailing. He's going to spot Mime. That's two down now for Sonics. As h win going to bleed out. Mime bleeding out as well. But Sonics, they've got three wins. Why wouldn't they push this? As we can see in the kill feed, Trogladin is also going to run into TSM. And now rest of 300 has come up to provide some support. So Tickleton and Shrimzy, they're going to have to face all of 300 here. Hey, you can see Extreme really working quickly along with Fox to join the rest of the team. Tiggleton and Shrimsy though, making quick work. You oh, see no. simultaneous knocks there onto Neverhor and Leda. And it looks like they heard Extreme come up the other side too. So this might be uh, another one if Tiggleton can get an eye on him. But it looks like he actually heard Tiggleton nades out. And that's going to push Tiggleton out of the window. Cannot fault 300 at all for taking this early fight. As we mentioned, you can see they're sitting in 11th place right now. They need these kills. They need these points to try to put themselves above that 8th place cut line. They need the money to try to get themselves in a good position here overall. Unfortunately for them, Sonic's going to find Extreme now as well. It is down to just Voxic, <gasps> and he is going to get shot in the back by Paragua. But, oh, no. Sonic's is going to be the one that cleans it up. At 300, things were looking so good. Things were, but they were able to damage Sonics oh, down to two here. players. And as everybody saw that on the kill feed, like you said, TSM now coming to investigate. However, it, Synergy just engaged in this fight. SSG quietly walking in behind them. Oh, it's been an action-packed early game here. Not something that we see very often on Erangel, but when the circle is acting like this, you expect to see a little bit more scrapping in the early game as Purdy is going to creep walk through. They have a very good idea that there is a team here. They just have no idea where. Tiggleton going to pop down and just listen for footsteps. Something to note too, 40 seconds until we get that phase two circle. So many teams right now holding onto the coast because this position will make or break whether or not they need to rotate across the water. And so uh, this fighting with Adapt and Fiumba also happening right now on the coast, it just shows how important this positioning is to all these teams. Ooh, in the kill feed, you can see Fiumba taking out one from Adapt there as a little picture in picture action. That was going on on the cliffs overlooking the ferry pier. Uh, so it looks like Adapt was trying to send somebody there to do a little camping, but Silzen from Fiumba in a perfect position as we continue to watch TSM creep around, see if they can pick out Sonics, but Sonics remaining disciplined. There we go. This circle oh has popped and Poro. I mean, you, you, you guys can hear his voice. Mm. It's still holding on to both. Now, this should be a main island circle. We have seen it on the third phase, pull real hard down south, phase four is so we're going to lose that water. But that is a lot of unplayable space if it does, in fact, go onto the mainland for teams to kind of bunch up and make that decision. You can see right now all the IGLs calling stay on the mainland. And so that's just going to make things so clustered with 55 alive. And it's only phase two with a zone like this. Well, TSM sees the pop and they're just going to get out of dodge. They see Synergy kind of rotating right behind them. This might be TSM just pulling into a compound and seeing if they can maybe uh, hold down the fort here while everybody rotates just past them. A lot of teams coming from this western side, not just Synergy and Sonics and TSM, but also Trogloditas, SSG, also making their way over there. You see Pippa creeping back into this compound where Sonics was, but what kind of information does Synergy have about what was left here? It's going to get up on the roof and see if he can maybe s figure out a little bit better the story of what's going on at the yellows. 
Uh, at Tickleton Trimsey, remember, down to just two. Synergy was watching that fight happen the whole time. They, they know that information, mm. that Sonics are still about in this area, uh, just seeing the quantity of players leaving there with TSM. But uh, like you said, I mean, what are they going to do with that information going forward? Knowing what we know for where players are already inside the existing zone, I, I think Synergy's best bet is to stay in this area and try to hold future pushes. But with Wildcard coming across the bridge, gas cans potentially falling pursuit behind them, these yellows are are, I mean, a big spot where we might see some of these teams crash, and that's going to spell trouble for teams like Sonics and Synergy in this location right now. Wild card coming from the southern side of Military Island. They did pass through the base itself, took a few shots in passing from Gas Cans. So Gas Cans was aware of their presence and actually slowed down their rotation. They're still on the island while Wild Card just continues to press it forward. You can see Pippa still has that High ground position has the mini out to take shots, and he's going to take them. A few shots will come through. Going to do some big damage on his Raven. Oh, Pippa. oh no. Wildcard called out his position, and he goes down instantly. Now, Fisher still in a good spot. Uh, actually, no, Ali RV, the one that's still in the yellows, but Fisher and Paragua shoot off on the cliff side here. So, uh, synergy a little bit split. Uh, this is uh, not what you want to be in situation for if you're Synergy. Now, they have gotten in their car, and they have the opportunity to pull back and help out Ali if he can keep his head down. Still well in the zone right now. Blue's closing, and they've got time to act on this. But the other two people who have time to act on this are Tiggleton and Shrimsy, as you can see, have not vacated the area yet. I mean, we know that they like to capitalize on the end of a fight, and this could be a good one for them to pick up some more kills on. Yeah, they're just kind of hanging around. They've left the buildings, but not hopping in vehicles, not really interested in escaping uh they will take a few shots there i'm not even sure where those came that might have been from ssg actually uh, over on the pachinki hills as uh, you're just kind of hanging around looking to see if they can pick anything up here uh, meanwhile gas cans has made it across the bridge they'll hear these shots but it looks like mm, it looks like they were looking to avoid it but now they're heading over in that direction yeah, I wonder if they thought this could be something that they could potentially engage. They may have read it as just being a 1v1 fight, but now with the circle moving on, it's kind of a decision they've got to take. How do you play the edge of the zone with so many teams right here in the area? The answer is sometimes as simple as just clearing out that spot. So uh, they got a lot of work ahead of them, but luckily it looks like Gas Can's starting to retreat. Ali trying to join the rest of his teammates along the coast. So uh, Gaskins might only just have to worry about Tickleton uh, and what's left of Wildcard. Well, what's left of Wildcard is all of Wildcard here. Is Tickleton going to strike? He's going to find Zealot, gets the knock and the flush. Will immediately turn back, but Maji will win that 1v1. And Sonics goes down in 15th place. Let's see if Wildcard can get this res or if Gaskins smells blood in the water. You can see Adam already repositioning there with the Dasha. Niku's coming in for assistance, too. They do get Maji knocked down, and Adam shooting through the U.S., trying to see if he can get a hit onto T-Sock. T-Sock peeking out through that window, and they're actually getting... Uh, it looked like they might have been getting some help from somebody else, but I'm not quite certain. Well, Maji was the res man's. So it's all down just to T-Sock. He's going to do a little defense. We'll find him, and it's all of a sudden it's down to Hikerman. As oh God, look at the look at the HP on Hiker. Oh, That's synergy. how close gas cans almost just came to being out. I mean, it, it, it's not safe just yet. They might be able to get this one res off, but Synergy wasted absolutely get no in time. There. Paragua, Ali, already here to take some action on. And even if Hikerman gets these reses, he's got to stop for a second, focus on healing. You see uh, first long. aid just popping off. So now you've got two members of Gas Cans up, both focusing on two different reses. They've got to act quickly, but luckily for them, it looks like a slight hesitation from Synergy uh, as Paragua is still trying to get in a good line of sight before acting. But Fisher, see that mini 14 out. He's holding that back anchor to try to assist, call out that information to Paragua, to Elite, to let them know exactly where the gas cans are. Uh, I, I don't get it. Uh, this is, this just took way too long. If you were trying to come in here and clean up whatever was left off of this fight, just, just send it. Send all three. Try to go in there, get the kills, and get on out of there. But right now, you, you've just basically put yourself... Uh, on top, I mean, I, I, this is a fight that's going on outside a circle. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, Gas cans back up to full strength. We'll see if Allie 
can maybe get an angle here. He's got the high ground. He's going to find Adam, take a few shots. Doesn't Ooh. even get, oh, he will get the knock. Okay, the last bullet's going to do it. But now the blue is here. He's going to find Nikos, but Nikos will find him. Oh, he said the blue is here. That might make things easier to find some of these knocks, but harder to get those reses if they don't clean this fight up quickly. Paragra still waiting for Gas Cans to peak. Will get a knock there onto Greg Shot. That's two members of Gas Cans down again. Nikus Hikerman looking for an angle to just open up a knock, something to help them out here on this fight versus Synergy. Ooh, the good grenade from Hikerman will find Paragua shoot. And that'll be it for him. Fisher is on the high ground in the hills. And look at this, TSM starting to leave that compound that they were in. They hear, I mean, they've heard nothing but gunfire coming from over here. Fisher <laughs> will find an angle and get Nikos, but now Fisher will get spotted by Luke 12, and Synergy is out. Gas cans still have one up in Hikerman as the southwestern side of this circle has just been uh, insane. And while all that was happening as well, Dignitas and Oath kind of vying for this corner. Two teams that have really loved to play the edge. And we know on Erangel, Oath loves holding on to that eastern side. The problem, of course, coming is that Dignitas oh, is able to wrap back around Poonage. and Poonage headshot there up to one, but two, but Balefrost with the nade takes down Sparking and Badger. I mean, that's back-to-back -back bolty shots from Poonage. The good grenade from Relo coming in. And look at this, Balefrost not wasting any time. The good Molotov will find Shimboy and pull him off of the res he has to leave, gets out of there just in time. Will get the flush on a Honey Badger, but Sparking managing to crawl out for the time being. Poonage spotting somebody out. Kickstart gonna do some oh. big damage through the fence line. And now Shimboy, Poonage very, very low. They realize that Balefrost is right on top of them as well. And that's a good grenade from Kickstart. We'll find the knock on the Shimboy. Poonage stops down to get the heal, comes out of the smoke, and oh. gets drop shot by Balefrost. What is it, 2017? That is absolutely amazing. And the best part of this, Oath has the opportunity for full recovery back up to a four-man squad. Uh, you saw Poonage pop that med kit in that smoke so close to Balefrost, feeling almost a little bit too confident there. But that prone play there, just beautiful, beautiful display there by Oath. And Dignitas still in 10th, still outside of that top eight. That couple of kills there will push Oath into seventh. So that's money in their pockets if they can hold on to it. Hikerman eating a lot of blue damage. We'll try to take shots into the back of Luke, but he has to stop down to get the heal, the first aid off here. But it looks like Alo. well, he wasn't looking over here a minute ago, but he will be now as Hikerman just seems like he's trying to do, see if he can get anything before he has to go down. Yeah, it's phase four. Once this oh, finish no. is closing, that chunk's gonna take Hikerman out. So TSM don't need to worry too much about him. What they do need to worry about is adapt. Richie B and Weum still up in this compound. And he's got the shoddy in hand, <laughs> just waiting for Luke 12 to come around. And there you go, Hikerman will finally go down. You see Black Tiger just off to the north in the hills, they had uh, Vision down on there, and actually Alo might be in some big trouble here as he's on the cliffs uh, eating all that blue damage for the time being. Luke 12 right on Adapt's compound, but hasn't gone for the push just yet. Meanwhile, the Circle Pops will go dead center. Fiumba still in a compound, still looking nice. And there you go, Alo able to join his teammate. Took a bit of blue damage, but now they've got the side of this barn to work from. But you can see that uh, you, you still got that shotgun out from Richie B. And in a close compound like this, that could be huge. But that Molotov is going to put pressure on him, send him upstairs. He's got to focus on healing recovery here. So William also with a shotgun in hand. I, I, I want to see one of these adapt boys get a shotty knock. It's a flaming Richie B runs up the stairs. We'll see if adapt can find the angle, can find the drop on TSM here. It looks like TSM, for their part, going to go into the other barn and wait for Adept to be the one to make the move. Meanwhile, Young Kings, Systematicos, still very, very close to each other. Outside a circle, northeast, they've got SSG just off to the west that could be overlooking this. United, also far off to the east. They've got to go somewhere. They know that Fiumba's compound is occupied. They know exactly where they are. You can see them peeking over in that direction. Should be able to find somewhere to go to avoid most of this. Or they know exactly where to crash, and that looks like exactly what they're going to do. 
Yeah, you can see the, the, the uh, I, excuse me, whoa, Fiuma actually really reacting out of this fight. I was going to say that you see E United uh, keeping a watch fly out on these two blue rooftop buildings and saw, hey, we're not getting shot from them. We're getting shot from further back in the compound. This is available to crash. We can play off this angle. They know that Systematicos and Young Kings are still fighting up in the trees in the north. So this gives them that vantage point to watch that fight going on, but they just need to be a little bit cautious of Fiuma being this close. You can already see how much damage they've been taking. Yeah, a lot of the damage they're taking is coming from Troglodytus, who's still outside of circle on the north side, but just happened to have a nice line of sight down onto E United. Adapt will finally go down to a combination of Black Tigers and Loop 12. As we check in on Systematicos, they've left Young Kings. They're making the rotation on foot down to the south. Meanwhile, Oath, they come in, they find a free compound on the other side of the road from TSM, and they're going to spot out the TSM FTX boys. We'll see if they can make it across the road. Another team that's been spot out, SSG, they kind of just edged their way into the zone in between Troglodytes and Young Kings. This might not be a sandwich that they want to be a part of right now. You can see those smokes starting to come out. Kill Demo and the rest of Troglodytes holding on to what bit of high ground they have and also keeping an eye of uh, Black Tigers across the map, but also with the high ground. And so readjusting some of those vehicles and giving them some additional cover uh, from the teams out to the south. Black Tigers just has a metric ton of real estate over here on the western side to work with. As we see Troglodytes creeping just over the top of SSG. And look Ooh. at the shift, hard shift down to the south. Fiuma stays in, so does Oath, but TSM has to get on the move. Black Tigers will have to as well, but all of this action going on to the north side. SSG, Troglodytes, Young Kings. All of this will come to a head. You can see Systematicos has also crept up behind e United on that eastern side as Keenan will find Ikuz with a well-placed grenade. I mean, SSG really have a lot of work ahead of them. Trying to push up the hill for Troglodytes isn't really a viable solution. They've got to take Young Kings on head on. The problem is that any direction they move, they're being shot at. And as trades coming out left and right, Troglodytes are also going to lose two out of this. Oh, everything is bad right now, unfortunately, for SSG. Oldless will do some big work, but he is now the last remaining player up. Trog have the smoke walls down. They should be able to get both of these reses off. You can see shots coming in from Young Kings. Shots coming that direction from Black Tigers. SSG will get cleaned up, and that will be it for them going out in ninth place. Trog now has the blue creeping on their backs. They should get all those reses up, and they will get back on the move. Meanwhile, the compound... Fiumba is inside circle. Everyone else is not. Systematicos took a gamble here. They actually snaked in around E United to try and look for a back way into Fiumba's compound, but I don't think they were quite ready to take on the pressure of two teams from the side circle. You can see Waldo Corsac really start to clean up members of Systematicos and Zera. Uh, kind of stuck out off to his own devices now. Meanwhile, Young Kings looking for their opportunity to creep in as well, but Troglodytes, who had sent it in, now in a gatekeep position. Ooh, Anzera gonna find Corsac as the United tries to make the move. Waldo gonna go down as well. Anzera has been spotted out. Valiate the last player up for E United. He's trying to wrap around on the north side. You can see on your mini-map is Fiuma just sits here waiting for the blue to come through. Luke 12 will get spotted out and that'll do it for TSM. Anzera, you see is now gonna have to do something as the blue has arrived. E United does go down as Valiate gets spotted out. Black Tiger engaging with Troglodytes, but between them and Young Kings, Trog gets taken down and we are down to our top four. I mean, this fell apart so quickly for so many squads, but I mean, look at the terrain ahead. You've got trees, you've got a little bit of dips, but the vantage point is so clear all the way across the map right now. Black Tigers took that wrap up to the north, focused on Trog, but now they're vulnerable to Young Kings. You can see trades coming out left and right between all three teams up here to the north. Oath, meanwhile, settled down to the south, all to themselves. You talk about real estate, Oath has so much of the circle at their, at their fingertips right now. Got a lot to work with here. It's worth noting that three of our top four Latin American teams, teams that had a hard time uh, with Erangel yesterday to start things off. But it looks like they've gotten something figured out here. Black Tigers, five kills in the bag already, four up. They're gonna wrap around, see if they can find the last remaining player for Young Kings. It's and one, it's just gonna fly prone amidst the bodies of his fallen teammates. KF9 looking over in that direction. Looks like he might also be looking for Fiumba. Black Tigers just skirting around the edge of this smoke cloud. I'm not even sure if they know 
that and one is in here and he could do some big damage oh. here he's gonna well, find one now. as he comes out he opts out of the u.s does damage gets back into the u.s and black tigers they're down by one here emmy gonna do some damage oh that might have actually saved him <laughs> you know what you gotta get creative and what fps making a game out of it but as black tigers uh, try to recover on some of that fiumba pushing their way close to the circle try to get close enough to keep get black tigers from getting in the zone oath meanwhile did creep up onto this. They left reload behind, hold anchor down to the south, Ooh. keep that watchful eye on everything that Fume was doing, and sent the rest of the three to see if they could catch off Black Tigers on this rotation. We also have Alm start. He's ready. He's waiting. I want to see it. Rello, also with the MK14s, big damage. Actually coming through from Black Tigers is Oath, maybe creeping up a little bit too high. I didn't realize how big the threat was from Black Tigers. Bale Frost will get the opening knock. Oh, oh my God, the name from Snakers. How many times can Oath get double knocks with nades? It seems like it's happening all day, oh, it, twice now in this tournament. And there you go. Letty taken out as well. Oath climbing the leaderboards. And these are the two teams we've talked about. Haven't put a chicken dinner down on the board yet. They're also uh, the two teams other than Sonics that have had some of the best placements on Aaron Gell yesterday. We're going to see a new chicken dinner winner from one of them here in just a moment. Right now, though, Fiumba have a better footing in the zone. Oath have a bit of the high ground to work with. If they can catch Capitan off, who's looked for this flank angle to play, this could be good for them. But they need Need to spot Capitan. A lot of room to here to work with still. As Oath taking up the west and the south, Fiumba taking up pretty much all points north. There's a ridge line that's just kind of cutting right down the center. You can see Kickstart still has that arm in hand. Nine bullets left. Got the 15x. I don't know about that. That's a little scary. But uh I'm sure he'd prefer a different <laughs> different scope, but 15 will do it. As uh, you can see, the new circle will pop, and it's going to favor Oath side just a little bit. But again, so much room that uh, you got to feel like both teams really uh, are favored here. Yeah, and, and uh, this is where Fiuma does well. They they keep their cool. They wait for that information. They've really spread out their their watchful eyes right on on different parts. Capitan has his homework. Silzen going out to join him for support. Emmy and DraftKings uh, trying to hold on that extra angle. Look for the remaining members of Oath, seeing if that wrap comes in from the eastern side, and, and not really making a move until they've got all the information. They're not taking the bait either just yet. Saw a few shots coming out there as Silzen got spotted out by the Oath Trio on the north side. They had left one behind to make sure that Fiumba didn't try to wrap around on that east side, but it looks like they've all gotten back together, reconnected as DraftKing uh, still just kind of working around that ridge over by the compound. Emmy has a vehicle, uh, the Dacia looks to be. We'll see where he decides to go with that, see if Fiumba tries to use that for their late game plans. Kickstart just staring into people's souls with that 15X and ooh, ooh, almost finds Emmy and Emmy heard that bullet whizzing past his head. He immediately got out of that dossier. I mean, you, you talked about Om start right now, popping those tires though. Om and giving... Rosa. Oh, well. Good God. Excuse me. Share Kickstart. Yeah. Come on. Maybe they maybe they all just have really, really good weapons. So maybe saw some barrels in there, right? Ooh. Good mix, but look at this. I mean, he's landing those shots now. I, one thing, though, he did pop the tires on that car. So, yeah, the car can't be moved, but that is going to make it a little bit easier for Emmy uh, to hide behind that, not get spotted from underneath the car. But, uh, I mean, again, Capitan still a big factor in this holding out that, uh, that off angle. It's keeping Oath from wrapping any further up the high ground onto the western side. They can't really go further uh, until they take out Capitan. But now as we go into phase nine, everybody's going to have to start moving forward. I, I, almost every single player right now is on the edge of the zone. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, uh, Oath has everybody together. They, they've got pretty much, uh, they know exactly where most of Fiumba is except for Capitan. Uh, Capitan, though, I mean, look at the smoke. You know, the smoke actually going to let them know that Capitan is up there. So Oath has a pretty good idea uh, of exactly where all the Fiumba members are, and I believe... Fiumba has a good idea where all of Oath is, so there's no secrets left to be had here. As we see, the smoke's trying to bloom here. Capitan starting to creep down on this western side. He's got a good idea of where they are. The grenade's going to come out, but it's going to fall woefully short as 
He maybe misjudged just how far they were. Another one comes through, also short. I mean, you see the smoke's coming out there. There's nothing left. The trees are, are all but gone now as the blue oh, continues to close in. But here comes the nades. Uh, nades been working well for both of these teams so far today. But with that, also the trade, 3v3. No time for reses just yet. But Emmy taking a chance here on the Draft King. It looks like Rillo also taking a chance on resing Balefrost. We might be back up to 4-4 four, four strong for both teams if someone can't find another knock here. Yeah, the trade came through. Fiumba immediately goes for their res. Oath finally getting theirs off. His stakers are going to spot out Silzen. Looks like they have a good idea where Capitan is. You can see he's looking up the hill, trying to see if he can spot him. Capitan working around those smokes very nicely here. Snakers will do some damage. Looks like Capitan will spot Balefrost. Gets the knock. Reload oh, down as well. And now it's all of a sudden, it's just down to Snakers as all of Oath goes down. And Fiumba gets the win. Seven kills for Fiumba it was getting a little bit scary there at the end as Snakers did manage to get a few knocks, but I mean, Fiumba played this one the way we've been wanting to see it from them. I think they finally learned their lessons from yesterday. They did play it a little bit slow, but this is a well-deserved win from them. That final fight was beautifully executed. Fiumba, an incredibly capable team.